you see them online, real estate entrepreneurs. But how are they doing it? And what are they doing different? We've got the answers. This is the Real Estate Block. Interviewing real estate entrepreneurs doing consistent real estate deals. If you want to be a real estate entrepreneur or you're already in the business, we've got on the pros that give the secrets and strategies to make it happen. This is the Real Estate Block, and this is your host, Aaron Gaunt. All right, welcome to the Real Estate Block podcast, where the value given during the show will help you create consistent real estate deal flow where we talk to real estate entrepreneurs doing consistent deals month after month. We'll be taking a deep dive into their team, marketing strategies, systems and processes on how they built a real estate, basically business machine that produces them consistent deal flow. Today I have Stuart, my good buddy, Stuart. Stuart, tell us a little about yourself. Tell us a little about yourself and why the heck did you get into real estate? Um, so, you know, I'll be 43 and, uh, in March, um, kind of like my backstory a little bit. Um, not really supposed to be where I'm at right now, you know, um, kind of, no. uh, you know, 20, let's see, I'm 23. So for 43, so from 23 to 30, I was on the streets doing dope, you know, just, you know, homeless, stealing from people, just doing dumb shit. Right. Uh, back in when I was, so it was 2009. Uh, I did a, you know, county year. So nine months of county jail. And that that was kind of my wake up. That was kind of my wake up call, you know, because when you got a bag of dope money in your pocket, everybody's your friend, you know. But once that's gone, you're irrelevant. The only person that kind of had my back was my mom, right? Week Hmm. weekly visits, packages, money on the books, phone calls. Um, So that was just kind of the wake up call. And then I got out, had a couple weeks to get it. You know, my stepdad at the time was like, "Hey, man, you got like two weeks. I don't even want you here, but you got two weeks. We don't have a job, like." Good luck to you, but you're not staying here, right? Um, oh wow! And my and my mom was like, "Well, you know, he's kind of right. You know, you've done us dirty." So I found a telemarketing job uh, down the street in Riverside, selling tools over the phone, um, and that kind of that was like that was it right there. Um, I met the people that I'm still with today: Chris, Dustin, um, Ryan, which I know you know everybody. You've met them all. You've been here, um, mm-hmm. and. So I worked hand in hand with Chris for 15 years and then they all left there to do, you know, other stuff, start the real estate company, which they were already doing real estate, but they, you know, the e-commerce and everything else. And I was still over there at the cup at the tool company. I was making 15, 12 to 15 grand a month, oh, not wow. bad money, but it's a, it's a high stress no. job, strictly commission. It's, it's just, you know, if, if you take your foot off the gas, you die over there, right? You have to dial, you have to be on the phones 12, 12 hours a day to make that kind of money. And it's just an endless rat race. Right. Um, But I was extremely unhappy, depressed. Um, I'm watching all my friends on Instagram become millionaires and I'm over there like, what about me? What about me? Um, And for about, you know, the two years after they left, they said, Hey, just be patient. The time will come. Um, Two years ago, two and a half years ago. Now I get a text message from Chris and Dustin, like, Hey, it's time. Um, we want you to run our real estate company. And I was like, I know jack shit about real estate. I don't know anything about real estate, right? And (laughs) they were like, that's fine. They're like, you can close deals. You know how to run a company. You know, you're a workhorse. They said, everything you need to know, we'll teach you as you go. And it was literally Mm -hmm. like, they told me there it was, I remember it was May and uh, it was a Thursday afternoon. And they said, go home, talk to Alexis, um, who was my, then fiance. Um, well actually, no, she wasn't even my fiance yet. We were, we had just moved in together. So she wasn't even my fiance yet. I said, Hey, so like, I'm going to quit my job and I'm going to go do this. And like, I know we just moved into this really nice house, you know, and she's a school teacher. So I'm like, and she's like, I got your back. She's like, if, if it fails, like we'll be okay. Right. I said, all right, let's, let's do it. Um, so I told them and they said, Hey, like, it was at the time when we opened our office in Costa Mesa where you've been to. And, uh, they're -hmm. like the new office opens July 1st. They're like, Chris tells me, he's like, what I would do He's like, I would quit right now and then take like a six week vacation. Cause after that, you're basically just going to be working all the time and learning. So I quit a week later and instead of taking the vacation, I just went right right to work. Uh, There you go. 
And, uh, you know, they just, at the time we were doing direct mail, texting and PPC. And, you know, they just, it was just like, it was basically that first six months of that, that last six months of the year um, was just a crash course in everything that I needed. Had my first deal within, you know, probably a month, closed a PPC lead. I remember they sent the notifications to my phone and it was a Saturday, I answered the phone, locked it up, called them happier than shit. We made 60, six, that first one, it was, it was in Amarillo, Texas. We picked it up for 17,500 and assigned it for like 81. <laughs> so we made nice. like 60, 60 something grand, you know? So after that, got my little commission check on that plus my salary. And I was like, damn, that was it. It was game over, you know? So now, now we, now we're here and you know, we're running an operation. We're doing multiple six figures a month. That's awesome, brother. Yeah. So, I mean, that, that's a, that's a great story. Um, and you went right, right into work. And I also want to touch on the fact that your wife, supported you on whatever you wanted to do right yeah i know that there was probably a ginormous risk maybe in your mind her mind but she just supported you oh 100 percent. And, and the risk was like okay so here she is on a teacher salary i mean she makes decent money right um uh, but yeah i mean we literally just went from like i had an apartment in riverside paying like 1200 a month she had an apartment in glendora where she was paying like 1700 a month my lease was up moved in with her we were splitting that and then we go into a house $3,000 a month, right? Plus bills. She just got a new car. I just got a new truck. We just got a travel trailer, you know? And like, here I am. Just like, hey, I'm just going to walk away from 120 grand a year. Right. It's, you know? And she was like, figure it. She's like, and if we fail, we'll figure it out. I'm like, well, we're not going to fail, but we're definitely going to figure it out. So without her and being that motivation, it would have never... I probably wouldn't have had the balls to do it. I could honestly say that because I, I was comfortable where I was at, right. you know, and what do they say? Comfort kills growth, you know? So. Absolutely. And, a- absolutely. That's a gold nugget right there. You know, and the, the, the biggest thing, like, like, and I still got the text message on here. Um, I have it pinned from Chris and Dustin. Chris is like, look at dude. He's like, above and like, we're friends but it's business. He's like, if you tell me no, he's like, I completely get it. I respect it. We'll always be friends. You'll always be welcome. He's like, but I'm going to give this job to someone else. And my biggest thing was just like, I'm going to shoot myself. If somebody else, if I don't take this job and I watch somebody else change their life. And that was kind of like the thing for me. Like I know when they put their all into something, like it's not Mm -hmm. just half ass. Right. So, and I knew I, there was no way in hell we're failing. Not with the no. team we have around here. No, not with not with the people I have in my corner. And they're 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 the other you know part of where I'm at now. So you had so you started working for Chris and Dustin. Uh, now, what would you call yourself? What is your title in that company at the moment? So for the I'm the operations manager, right? I oversee everything. I, I'm okay. on the phone. I'll do acquisitions, dispo, TC. Uh, you know, I'll train cold callers. I'll respond to texts. I'll, I'm doing whatever needs to be done at the end of the day to make sure we hit our numbers. Uh, you know, if it's jumping on a phone on a Sunday afternoon, if it's, you know, answering PPC calls that are, you know, coming straight to my phone, I don't care where I'm at. Like I've locked them up on the campsites. I've locked them up while we're hiking in the state of Maine. Cause we go back to Maine during the summer for, you know, for a month on vacation. Cause my wife's mom has a house back there. Um, it don't matter. I'll answer the phone. Disneyland don't matter. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. And so what, I mean, so are you guys just strictly wholesale right now? I mean, are you guys doing any retail stuff or you guys do innovation? Are you fixing flipping? So, so the wholesale operation in whole is just to feed like their, their buy and hold strategies. Like I don't, I don't take care of, I don't, I don't have my hands on any of the fix and flip stuff. If we get a deal in, and if it's Southern California, Northern California, or a couple other markets that, you know, we're buying in in Texas and in Arizona, you know, I'll present deals to Chris, um, show them to him. And then he decides if he decides what, that he's going to keep it or something like that, it's out of my hands. You know, um, if he's going to fix and flip it, it's out of my hands. The only I'm just the wholesale operation, you know, and then that feeds all his other uh, parts of the real estate company. But once 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 it becomes not a wholesale to any other, you know, 
uh, strategy, they're out of my hand. I don't mess with it. Right. So you're so you're pretty much you're 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 doing the dispo. You're doing the the TC. You're doing uh, the acquisition. I mean, what is, I mean, are you guys, are you still are you doing the marketing? I mean, what does that look like? Yeah, I mean, so, so like our marketing, so we're strictly just cold call at PPC and we're running real PPC heavy right now. Um, mm. You know, I, we, my team, we have, I have my right hand man, KB. Uh, then we have uh, two jacks and an in house TC. Right. But like I said, I like, I like just, that you guys. When I came to you guys' office, um, I got I love that name the for junior acquisitions, Jacks. I never heard it that way. And yeah, we called uh when we had juniors for a while, we called them Jacks. Yeah, yeah. So you guys saw a couple you saw Jacks? Yeah. Um we, we have two of them that are in house, they're part time. Um yeah, so they're 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 good kids, you know. And they kind of like they kind of they kind of work when they want, but yeah, they they work part time. <laughs> All right, so so Stuart, you're basically running the wholesale and fix and flip operation, um, you know, just juggling all of it. Let me ask you this. What, it, when you just got that first deal, it took you about 30 days to get that first deal. Yeah. How did you keep getting that consistent deals? Right. And how did you move into basically juggling everything and running the show? Um, so for me, I would say like, it was, I'm very just money driven and just, you know, I set, I set small goals, achievable goals for myself on a monthly basis. Right. I'm not going to be like, Oh shit. I, I don't, I don't look at it as like on a year. I look things like on a month and day by day too. Right. Um, so for the way we went from like, I, let me back up a little bit. It's, it, it was hard to fail in this, in this system because everything was already right. in place. I just needed to right. Learn. Right. So I didn't have to come in here and reinvent the wheel. I just needed to be like, okay, that's what they used to do. Here's what we're going to do. Right. Uh, I didn't have to recreate any systems. I just had to learn everything that was already in place. Right. Uh, and it's, you know, when you got a marketing channel like Chris and it's just, there's plenty of money to pump into marketing. So it's not like I, I don't have to worry about shit. When am I going to come up with 40 grand next month? It's already there. I know it is. I just need to make sure the bills are paid and that, you know, we're not going negative. So I, I don't have all that other stress right. that a lot of people do. Uh, it's just lock up deals, get them sold, lock up deals, get them sold, lock them up, get them sold, lock them up, get them sold. Right. You know, I don't have to worry about and th bills. I don't have to worry about anything else. No, absolutely. So like not, you're not really too worried about the overhead too much. Um, when it comes to um, doing like, getting these locked up. Um, how are you struggling with the dispositions in this market right now? Um, so what was it? So where were you at right now? We're December. So back in when did the market start to turn like April, May, something like that. Right. Yep. Yeah. So I remember I had locked up a couple right. deals in, uh, up in Northern California, Sacramento County. I had one down here and I, and like, I had a really good, like, it was like, a six or seven day period where I had some really good deals locked up and I thought, okay, well, you know, I'm down in, you know, in the high 50% area of locking them up. And then our mm -hmm. normal pocket buyers, they're just, they're like, nope, nope, nope. So then in our weekly, our weekend meeting, we're going over everything. And I just, I remember I came to Chris and I was like, bro, like, what am I doing wrong? Cause I hadn't experienced it because mm -hmm. when I came in, it was right in the heat of everything, right? You could, you know, hedge funds are buying at 105%. Buyers aren't carrying, you know, just like <laughs> buy, 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 buy. So uh, yep. he started to help me. And then he's like, honestly, he's like, so for a couple of his coaching students, he's like, why don't you just Monday morning, we're just going to do a call. And he's like, you just sit in on it. Right. And it's kind of like, it all comes down to just the sales and negotiating part of the acquisitions part. Once I was educated on what the market was doing and where it was going. Right. I like to, I, li I like to tell sellers on the phone, you know, like, Hey, if I'm not always going to be a good fit for everybody and that's okay. And I'm okay with that, that I don't buy every single house from every single person I talk to. But if you get one thing out of this conversation, I hope to leave you just a little bit of educated. And I would talk to people because most people aren't, you know, they don't care about where the real estate market is until it's time for them to sell. 
right? Yeah. But then all, all they know is, hey, my neighbor Bob sold their house eight months ago for a hundred thousand dollars over asking. So why can't I do it, right? And I just, I'm very thorough. Like if somebody's at home with a computer, I'll tell them, hey, jump on the computer and let me show you what's selling. And you know, and oh, I like wow. to educate them. So that is what helps me get sellers on board so I can then lock up the property at a, at, a, at a number and walking them through the numbers. I'll be like, Hey, look at this house around the block. This thing's been sitting for 170 days. You know, for an investor like me, I'll tell them, say, Hey, you know what that does for my holding cost? And I, and I just go through the mm. whole process and I work the numbers backwards with them. You know how it okay. is. You get a seller on the phone and be like, Oh man, there's a hundred thousand dollars spread between what the house is worth and what you're picking it up from. I'm like, yeah, you know how fast that money's gone. There's no profit, yep. you know, and it works. It works well for me, you know, and it just comes down to you could really insult somebody if not done properly. You could really offend them and, you know, get hung up on real quick. Absolutely. But it all comes down to that rapport building in the beginning of the call. And even if it's, you know, the second or third call that that happens, but, you know, the follow up, all the all in every follow up call, you're building that rapport and you're just constantly, you know, you know, nurturing that relationship with the seller to eventually when you do get to that point, even if it's a couple calls down the road, then they're just, they kind of trust you. You know what I mean? Absolutely. I, what you just said there, you said that you, you actually get the, I not be honest. I have not done this. You get them on the uh, phone. You have them hop on the computer. You have them look at comparables and work backwards. Let me ask you this as a person who is doing acquisitions and grinding and hustling, cause it's a, it's a grind, right? Yeah. Um, how do you keep your mind right? For example, I had somebody call me yesterday and they were just kind of out of their mind on price. It was a PPC lead actually called came in and, and I'll be honest, it was after hours. It was with, um, I was with my family and I didn't have the patience to really do all that. How do you keep your mind right? And to make sure you're always given your all, all given the rapport and, you know, basically talking them into uh, what realistically that you could do. So what I do, like, so I, I put PPC calls into at least two, I guess, two categories, right. Uh, of urgency, like, okay, how urgent is their situation and what do they sound like? Right. And I'm kind of just going off of the beginning of the call. Like, you know, how to, so with a PPC call, it'd be like, yeah, I was just calling, you know, what, what's, what's my house worth? Okay. Well, what are you looking to find out? Why, why do you need to know what your house worth? Oh, just cause I'm thinking about selling and I'll just, you know, mirror and match and be like, well, what are you looking to sell for? Why? All it's, you why, why do you want to sell it? And then if they're just like, well, you know, I'm moving out of town or just, you know, I'm just looking to cash out. I'll be like, all right, well, I'll tell you what, I'm with my family. Is it cool if I call you back tomorrow? Hmm. Right. Um, and then if it's just like, well, you know, uh, my mother just died uh, or my husband just passed away. I'm in this house. I don't want to be in here anymore. I just, you know, I'm staying at my sister's house because the memories of the house, that kind of a situation. Then I'll step away, talk to them, fill them out. Just start, start that report process a little bit. And honestly, depending on where I'm at, right. Um, if it's somewhere where I can sit down or pull over, uh, Come, I don't really pull over that much, you know, I'm texting, <laughs> right? Uh, but I will then like start the data gathering process or if I'm like super busy, but I know it's urgent, I'll go to my right hand man, KB, and I'll just shoot him a text mm. message real quick with a screenshot because 90% of the time it's, you know, one of the two of us can take care of that call and take right. it from there, you know? Um, and the ones that just need to be walked backwards and to be educated and seen what the numbers look like. Those ones, you know, I make sure that like I'm in a spot to where I can actually go through it because it does take some patience. Um, and you know, those ones are usually like the second or third call with somebody when they're just like, you know, they're ready, but they're just so stuck on because their neighbor Bob sold their house for this. They think their house is worth that. So it's just, right. You know, Every, every call is different. You know, every, every deal is different. There's no, right. They're not, they're not the same ever. No, not at all. And Stuart, I, I've been seeing you coaching people. On, what, what are you coaching them on? Are you coaching them on sales? Like what? Are, uh, so yeah, sell, sales acquisitions. Um, thanks for bringing that up. Cause I mean, that's something that I am pursuing and 
it, I started realizing a few months ago, like people were coming to me and I was giving out free game, you know, other people's <laughs> students, uh, right. you know, Chris had me working like with his students. He'd be like, Hey, Stu's really good at this. You know, I'm going to connect you with them. So finally I'm like, well, everybody else, it's time, consuming. Money. It's time consuming. So yeah. I, and I have a lot to offer. Um, it's the acquisitions and just the sales and negotiating part. Like um, I'm, I learn differently, right? I, I learn by watching, right? I don't, I right. can read a book 10 times and it's just literally going to go in one ear and out the other. Let me watch you twice and it's game over, game over, right? So with my students, it's a lot of that. Hey, come into the office, hang out with me for a couple of days. I'm going to jump on calls with you. Oh, wow. uh, uh, you know, if you need help copying a property, stuff like that. Uh, but it's it's not that, for that's life. awesome. I was gonna say, like, I've had people ask me, like, hey, can you help me get my first deal? No, I can't. Like, it's for people that are <laughs> doing a few deals, but they're just trying to navigate the market and just right. navigate the sales part of it because that's really what I'm good at is sales, negotiating, acquisitions, and just talking to people. Like, it's an art. Sales is an right. art, 100. percent And that so that goes right. I mean, that's a shout out right there, Stuart. You know, if you if you need to, you know get good at sales, hit up Stuart. But the reason why I did have you on here too is because, yeah, you might not be the person who is the owner of the company, but you're also, but you're the acquisition guy. You're the revenue generating um, individual for the company. For example, um, you know, in our company, um, so we were up to four acquisition guys and right now I'm the only acquisition. Well, actually we just hired an acquisition guy um, starting this week, but for, for about a month and a half, I was the only acquisition guy. And the reason why it, and all the things I could I could be doing in the company, I'm focused on revenue generated activities. And where does that come in? That is going in by getting um, properties, right? Yeah. Uh, that being said, when you when you're talking to your students, right? You say to you want you want to talk to individuals that are doing a couple of deals, but you you want to teach them to ramp up. What kind of yeah. advice are you getting giving them to ramp up their deal flow? So is is like to ramp it up. Um, Number one, like, it's making as many offers as you possibly can in a day, right? And just trying to get good. And the only way you're going to do that is you're going to, you know, get it, get really good at underwriting deals on the fly. You know, just kind of like being able to look at it real quick and analyzing the data without getting like analysis paralysis, right? You don't want to dive too How are you far doing into that? Um, the biggest thing I use, like right now, like I was actually, uh, one of my students, we were going over it last night and I, uh, PPC deal came in right when we jumped on our call and I ended up going through the whole thing, made the offer. Um, I lowballed the shit out of the guy. Uh, <laughs> right. But I, what would be a low I, ball for you? Uh, under 40%. Under forty percent ARV, like on a regular. And this house well. was this, yeah. But it's it's sticker shock, right? Because, like, and and it's kind of kind of not get off topic, but like the way I was taught, like, is not to give out the first number ever, 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 right? And mm. at least ask ten, you know, seven to ten times, just different, you know, going different routes to try to get some kind of number out of them to see. Because why do you want to offer somebody? 70% of ARV, like when they were, had it in their mind that they were just going to take 40%. Right. right. So say if, say, say if I said, Hey, Aaron, how much do you want for a house? Like a hundred grand. And you're like, well, yeah, but in your mind, you went into the call prepared to take 70. Now I just cost myself mm -hmm. 30 grand. Right. Um, so when you, when I can't get those numbers out of the guy and I'll tell you the situation with this is this is why. So the guy had his house on market. It was on market for like 180 something days. It was uh, outside of Austin. So it had failed. And I'm looking at data at the same time I'm talking to him. His neighbor, he, they started at like 635. They canceled the listing at 520, right? And I'm looking at this. I'm like, okay. And it was on market 170, 180 days. So his next door neighbor's house is listed at 480 in better condition than his house was, right? There's a, uh, and uh, as is cash comp that just closed like 439 right around the block on the next cul-de-sac over. So 
he's sitting here telling me, he's like, yeah. And he's, he's blaming it on the agent, you know, a shitty agent. I said, it doesn't matter. I said, if the house was on the market, if there was somebody interested, they would have bought it. Right. Right. Um, and he's trying to, he's like, yeah, I'm probably just going to put it back to close to where we listed it, you know, probably in another month when the market recovers this and that. And I was just like, okay. And I just trying to kept trying to get a number. I was like, what would you take right now? And he's like, I don't know, probably something close to what like the number was when we canceled the listing. And I was like, okay, so like 400 grand would get it done right now. And he's just like, Oh, he's like 400. But then he was just like, how quick would you close that? There you go. And I'm like, you know, within the next month or so. And then, uh, then, then he literally countered me on the spot. He's like, what do you think you could do like 425 or 430? And I was like, probably not, you know? And then, and then I said, I said, you're in front of the computer. I said, why don't you look at these two houses? I said, your neighbor's house is completely remodeled and it's sold for 480 after a hundred days. Mm-hmm. And then he's like, well, I didn't really realize it sat that long. So when they see that, right. Had he not seen it or you get another wholesaler on the phone that they don't do that, they're going to lose that deal. But because he saw what actual data was, I'm probably going to get that thing close to 400. Right. And my plan is the, the investor that bought that cash comp that as is, I already skipped Trace's number last night. As soon as I get a sign, I'm calling him, you know, be like, Hey, you want to buy the house next door or around the block? <laughs> right. So, uh, um, there you go. And just being able to do that is one thing, like analyze that data without getting stuck because with like PPC deals, that's the biggest thing is you have to be able to do that while you're on the first call with people, because remember they're reaching out to us. Yeah. Right. So yeah, I was just say that it's just, you just got to remember, like uh, you got to answer the phone, you know? And that's another thing. Like I, one story I remember like uh, Chris and Dustin told me like when they, back in the day when they started doing bandit signs, and they had asked one of the one of the guys that they called, answered the phone. They got the house, assigned it. So they go back and be like, hey, why would you choose us? And he's like, well, I called. I seen like 18 of those signs on the side of the freeway. And he's like, you guys were literally the first people to answer the phone. That's how easy it is to make the money. You know, just answer your phone. Do the work. That is mind blowing. It is mind blowing to see agents, wholesalers. Fix flippers. Anybody who's doing any type of marketing, not answer the phone. Yeah. You know, exactly. Um, why, why are you going to go build a house without your tool bag? You're going to forget your hammer at home. No, <laughs> yeah. no, we've, we've gotten so many deals by being the only ones who answer the phone are the ones that are responsive. One of our core values is a sense of urgency. Yeah. Um, so we're on, we're also doing a lot of PPC leads. So when I see a PPC lead come in, I'll be honest, I, even if I'm with my, so bad for, for now, but, <laughs> I'm I'm having dinner with my family, but I'm like, oh, PPC, and I'm running to my office, and I'm I'm calling yeah. them, yeah, right, because well, then they're going to call Stewart, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, the, and that's <laughs> the thing. It's like that's 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 the reality of it, right? Or or this case, like, you ever get a PPC lead? You call it three minutes later, and they don't answer, right? Yeah. You want to know why they're not answering? Because you didn't call them back fast enough because they're talking to Aaron already. <laughs> right? Exactly. Exactly. And it, it's it's frustrating. Like, yeah, it's like. And then, like, when you finally do get a hold of them a day later, they're like, yeah, I, I went with another company. And I'll ask them, like, well, why? And they're like, because they were the first one that got back to me. Hey, exactly. You know? when, I, when, I, when I, there's sometimes I'll ask when they say they went with another company, I like to ask what company, you know, if they're comfortable enough to add, because mm-hmm. I want to see if I know them, because, you know, this community is so small. Um, sometimes I'll actually know. I had a, um, I had a deal um, that I did get locked up. And they were going to sell it to a buddy of mine that I knew exactly who it was. I was like, oh, so you're talking to, you know, this person. His name was Austin. I was like, oh, you're talking to Austin. And they're like, yep, yep. And so I, when we locked it up, I uh, I gave him a call and told him about it. And I, <laughs> that one felt good. Most people are probably going to listen to this um, audio um, okay. like on Apple and Spotify and stuff like that. But let me ask you this, Stuart. Right now in this market, I mean, what's, what's your big, what's your the number one struggle that you're dealing with honestly for uh for me personally in this market it it's it's still just it's getting properties at a number that they're assignable you know and mm. kind of just trying to keep up with where our buyers are like like our pocket buyers like southern california northern california that stuff doesn't even hit the market right it doesn't if if, if we're not keeping them they're gone like i i got like four or five people right and those people like 
are constantly like telling me like, Hey, this is where I'm buying at. This is where I need it. Right. Um, so right. if it's like, you know, if it's a lipstick rehab, it's going to that guy, but I already know where he wants it, but it's the national deals, you know, um, right. that those, those are the ones that, you know, are challenging and it's just keeping them up. So like what I tell my guys every day, like in our little meetings, I'm just like, remember, like, you know, if it comes down to where you're going to have to spit out a number, and I like to tell them like this, hey, if, you know, you're looking at Zillow, for example, uh, and you see it, you know, the the low the low number is 150,000. I tell them, you know, normally just shoot out something right around, you know, 50% or less. But I'm now I'm like, okay, take whatever number you're going to spit out and knock off 20 grand and go even lower. Just, you know, utilize that low anchor. And, and they're, they're all highly trained um, to do that. But I think it's just locking up assignable deals to where we're not spinning our wheels. Um, 100%. And, you know, not lock. And a year and a half ago, we could do that, right? You can lock up everything and just, it's probably going to move. You know, either you're making five, six grand or, you know, five figures or six figures. But now, like, you know, we just lost two deals in Austin that were deals mm. that I locked up personally. Um, I felt I had them low enough, but I just got eaten alive. And yeah, I could have probably locked them up a few dollars cheaper, maybe not enough to where it would have made a difference. One of them, yes. One of them, I could have done it in the beginning, but I, because I put it off so long um, and the guy was just grumpy old man anyways. Uh, so he, he, wasn't, <laughs> he, he probably wasn't going to play ball. So it's just making sure that you do it, um, getting it at the right, as close to the right price as possible now or low enough. Um, Cause we're really good at getting reductions and it was easier to get, re it's always, it was easier to get a reduction a year ago too, to where it was, right. you needed just to squeak out a couple dollars. Now it's just for some reason, like that's the only struggle we really have. Are you guys uh, utilizing innovations right now? Um, so I did, I did, a, I did a mastermind um, with Corey uh, last Gary? year. Yeah. Nice. And it was, it was super knowledgeable. Um, I took a stab at a few of them, got one of them across the finish line. The other three fell apart. Mm. Just, yeah. So it's, we're not as much as I'd like to. Um, right. You know, so we kind of just, yeah, we're not, we're not as much as I personally would like to, we're not. Gotcha. That's something that, um, you know, we did, we probably got 13 uh, properties last month. And I would say probably half of them are novations, and then the other half are wholesale. How how are you doing on moving them? Doing okay. Uh, we had to come down on price um, on them, but we're now we're getting them across the finish line. So yeah, we've done we've done a few now. Um, we have a few that we're working on. We just blasted out. We just put another one on the MLS today in um, in the mountains somewhere. But we're getting a lot in like Big Bear. So they all local then. So no, nothing out of state. No, actually in Texas. So we're the two markets we're in is Texas and California. Um, that's another thing. When the market changed, I decided to I was like we got hit the hardest here in California on the West Coast. So yeah. I decided I was like we need to open this uh, this up. So because you're doing PPC nationwide, correct? Yeah, we yeah we're nationwide on PPC. Nice. How how is that look? Because I mean, it, you know, if you got the buyers, you don't have to find a buyer. Um, are you just like targeting all the major cities, or are you just like strictly nationwide? Uh, so. We have, we have multiple campaigns actually. So we're just kind of like, you know, we're in all the major markets that are still hot that have seen the, the, the least amount of decline. Mm -hmm. Right. And then we're still just nationwide. Like our main campaign is just, you know, nationwide. What we'll do is, you know, instead of like zeroing in on that one, we just exclude places where we don't want to be. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. No, it's yeah. Texas has been great. We had a, uh... We have two properties right now that we got, I locked up at like fifteen grand and just so unheard of um, here in California. Are those the ones you guys posted yesterday? Yeah, Alex. Yeah. Um, he was moving them, and yeah, we just we just made fifteen on like each you know each of them. So we yeah. had like a little buy now price on them, which I was surprised because you know that's usually our uh, EMD here in California. Yeah, right. <laughs> so it's all new to me. Uh, let me ask you this, Stuart. What is your what? Is, and when you have a meeting with Chris, Dustin, your team, what are you guys talking about right now? Because I want to ask, I want to get personal. What, what are you guys talking about to um, get through this recession and come out the other side? And that's why you're on this show because we know we're going to be seeing Stuart and the team 
out, you know, after this, this little recession. So I'm actually, I'm glad you, you know, you asked that question. So like for, for us, and I'm going to, I'm going to give all the credit to Chris on this one, right? Cause this is something like we've, we've been preparing for it going on 10 years. And when I say mm. that, not just, this, not just this particular recession, but he, he likes to say like, you got to look at wholesale real estate, like owning a pawn shop, right? Like yep. you go buy a Rolex for 20 grand, you get into a pinch, your wife's got medical bills, you got to make a house payment. What are you going to do with that 20 grand Rolex that you just paid for a year ago? You're going to take it to a pawn shop and you're going to get 10 for it. So right. people are always going to have distressed situations, right? Somebody's always going to be losing their house. Somebody's always going to have a reason. The only thing that we have to continuously adjust on for the recession is like what we've already talked about, making offers to get the houses at a price to where you can market them at. So when I say that we've been preparing for the recession, it's something we already do. Right. Right. Because as far as like the, the business end of it, right. Um, we have low overhead. We're a streamlined company. You know, there's what? One, two, three. There's, I mean, you've, you've been in our office. We're running five different companies out of this one office. Right, so if right. one company is not doing so well, there's enough others that take care of everything else, right? Yep. Between everything, between everybody's companies that are run out of here. Um, but as far as just like the, the wholesale part of it, there's sellers are always going to have situations even yep. more so now. So the influx of the leads are going to come. So we just need to make sure, like you said, what's my number one struggle is making sure I'm still locking up deals at a number that makes sense and are, you know, walking that fine line of being fair to the, to the seller but also making sure we're not wasting anybody's time when it comes to our buyers and stuff like that. Right. And cause you, you, you know, yourself have students, Chris has students. So you guys have students that are in real estate. I'm sure. And correct me if I'm wrong. Have you seen people just kind of like leave the business? Yeah. 100%. Kind of, that... I mean, there's, I mean, I'm not going to, I'm not going to start saying names, but you're on Instagram too. There's been a few gurus and few, you know, people that were always <laughs> posting doing deals and right. Where are they at? I haven't seen them. Yep. I haven't seen them in eight months, you know? So there, there's people out there. And then just like even, yes, and students too, 100% right. students. Right. There's uh, multiple people that just don't know. And it, all, and it all just really just comes down to they aren't good at the sales and negotiating part, right? They, they were, they came into this in the hedge fund era and the, the, the era of, <laughs> you know, everybody's just, you know, get rich quick, you know, gold yep. rush. E easy times. But they forgot to go back, you know, go back to basics, go back to day exactly. one. Exactly. You know, and remember the, your principles and going back to what this is actually based on is sales negotiating and being able to talk to people and get that down. Because if you get that down, the rest of it's easy. But if you right. can't master that right now, you're going to sink. That's that's the whole point of what why I named the the real estate block because it's and this is how, I haven't really announced this yet but the block is the foundation of real estate and if you get your yeah. foundation if you perfect the foundations of sales and marketing no matter even if you're a fix and flipper buy and hold investor yep. just sales and marketing and just knowing the basics you'll you'll make it out the other side but I like that yeah. you, you've been preparing for ten years on your skill set so that when it does get hard yeah. whether it be bittersweet that people are getting out of the market and coming in you've, you know, you've been preparing yeah. by and, understanding and, the basics. And, and that's like, literally just, that's a credit to, you know, all of us in here all came or all a product of, you know, Chris and, you know, right. just how good at sales he is and he's trained all of us. So it really just comes down to that, you know? Absolutely. Let me ask you this, Stuart, what have you read or listened to that's inspired you recently? Um, I don't read a lot of books. Right. And like I do like so the last book I read was Go for No. OK. Right. But um, can I tell you what it was about? No, it's probably the first book I read in a year. And the only reason I read it is so my wife, uh, she actually left teaching after. So uh, going back to like now it's my turn to repay the favor. You know, she there actually left teaching at the end of this last year, just, you know, wow. for personal reasons. Uh, but I was like, hey, we're going to be more than OK now. Now it's time for you to pursue your passion. That's right? awesome. Uh, so her new, her, one of the guys, one of the guys she works for is actually one of her really good friend's husband. 
she's doing like she's in the like financial stuff like uh estate planning and stuff okay and he's a close he's a closer and we were actually at their house in september and uh you know he's he, he's he's a book nerd his name's eric he likes to he reads a lot right and he actually gave me this and he's like i read this book once a year and he's like here i think you'll like it and it's only like 80 pages right right and um uh, yeah, I read it. So right after I got that book, we did like a six week challenge in the office. It was like kind of like a 75 hard, but we called it just the 75, whatever you want to do, you know, but, <laughs> but it was like, you know, work out, you know, six days a week, not two a days, you know, at least 30 days, 30, 30 minutes of cardio, read, right. meditate, eat proper, just, you know, just kind of just whatever. And uh, so I'm like, what am I going to read? And uh, then Alexis, she's like, Eric gave you that book. And it was 80 pages, right? It was like supposed to be like 10 minutes a day. I finished that book in like five days. There you go. But but yeah, go for no uh, small book, real thin, 80 pages. It's actually a pretty cool book. It's just it's about a guy that he he basically he was a insurance salesman, or no, he worked he was some kind of salesman, and he meets himself in another life after an accident, and his his other self was a successful salesman, you know, multimillionaire. And he basically his his old self or his future self helped him get through the sales process and told him, you know, if you just go for 100 no's a day, you're going to get to the yes. Hmm. So if you go for the no. You'll get you'll finally get to a yes. So go for no is the name of the book. Uh, but as far as podcasts, um, you know, I like straight out of Compton with Jamil. I actually hmm. watch that. I, I watch the repeats of that still to this day. Really? Okay. Um, yep. Sunday service. Cause I, I, I am kind of like, I really want to learn creative financing. Okay. Um, wholesale hotline. You know, those guys are actually, you know, I, I give those guys a lot of credit. I mean, they're, they're pushing their product, but they do give it a lot, a lot of free information, you know, um, and this is a lot of valuable stuff. So that's really what I listen to. Um, but yeah, it's, you know, I'm not, not going to sit over here like, Oh, I read this book, that book, you know, no affirmations, nothing like that. It's just, right. you know, I get to work. I had a, I had a chance to um, go to Jamil's uh, mastermind. Um, so what happened was, I think it was la it was actually last year we had this deal. Um, we couldn't move it, just couldn't move it, and I was surprised because it was a good deal. So, anyways, we sold to Fair Trade at the time. So at you know Adam Stone. Uh, I know who he is. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know if you. I don't know. People got no, no. About Fair Trade. I, but... I, I know. I well, and uh, and New Western. And New Western. So anyway, so we sold the deal to Fair Trade. Um, they said we can move it. I said, okay, perfect. I, we can't give a shot at it, right? Anyways, um, they, they sold the deal. And I, I asked Adam, hey, how much did you sell this deal for? He said 30 grand. I said, you got to be freaking kidding me. I was I was actually really upset. So I said, how do we get better at dispositions, right? We need to learn more, whatever. Uh, who, who are we going to go to? We went. So we thought about Keegley. Um, so anyway, so I hit up uh, Jamil. They said they had this mastermind come in. And so we paid whatever it cost to go there. And so we, flew, me and my wife flew out to Phoenix and sat there and uh, learned a few things. And the biggest thing that we came, that the reason why we went there was to learn how to find all the buyers. Yeah. And because we know the generic ways, PropStream, uh, go, you know, all the other Title stuff, companies, but, everything. Yeah, exactly. We know all the, like the basic stuff. And what it, what we found out was, you know, well, actually, he gave us a gold nugget. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna say this right now. So he, I had a one on one with him, and this is the gold nugget that he gave me. And as a matter of fact, we haven't even really tried this, but he said because he has a whole team like of just callers of of people that are in house just making dials on you know LinkedIn, Facebook, all that, yeah. right? All the basic stuff that we all know about. But what he said is that he'll go on PropStream or some platform like it, and he'll pull out all the um, people that own a million dollar plus homes. And what he did is that they would get a bunch of people and he would call them and see if they would like to invest in real estate. Knowing people that who own million dollar homes, they're going to buy properties at a higher margin. Right. Yeah. So anyways, that was his gold nugget to me, one-on-one -on -one behind doors. Um, and I'm going to share that with you guys here today, but that's, so actually, thought, that's, 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 that's a good one. Yeah. So I, I like and it, it does take a team to do that, but we, right now we do use, um, we're, we're on cartel and investor lift. It's, it's yeah, um, us too. obviously, yeah, it's it, right now. It's kind of doing it, doing its thing, right? Yeah. Um, especially if you're going to be nationwide, but because that was my big thing, I I always say, you know, I always wanted to go deeper in Southern California and not wider. 
well, when we had that market shift, I was like, all right, we got to go wider because properties below 100, 500,000, 200,000, right? They're moving like crazy. So, yeah, and that's that's definitely, yeah, the, the, the lower price points, you know, under for us, I'm seeing like under, you know, 400, you know, they exactly 400 and 400 arv those houses are still moving you know because oh, yeah. if somebody, if somebody's got to come in yeah if somebody's got to come and put 20 percent down on it they got it you know i mean i don't want to say not a lot of people have 80 grand laying around but <laughs> you know it's it's still pretty you know feasible most people are going to be able to scrounge that up you know when i'm buying a house right Stuart. let me ask you this now that you've been in real estate for a couple of years now what's the number one myth that you know because you came in kind of like oh i don't know what the heck chris what are you talking about you want me to do this real estate thing what's the number one myth that you kind of debunked so i'm gonna i i think well, i haven't used been using my answers but that one because i i know i had a that was one that i wanted to use um i think the biggest debunking myth it is no you're not doing this with little to no money <laughs> right, right. Be, be, because honestly, because you need to invest in like a mentor, a coach. Uh, exactly. Right now, you need to if, if you know you're not you're not driving for dollars right now. You know, not in today's, not in Southern California. You're not because like we were just talking about, you can't just we can't do that right now. I mean, you're gonna get lucky. Right. You're gonna find one or two, but that's saturated. Everybody's doing that. You know, trying to mm -hmm. that's the freeway. So I think getting into it. Uh, just I, I don't I, I personally don't like it when I hear like, oh, yeah, you can get into wholesaling with no money. You know, you could, you know, go do, do this and that and this. I'm like, and all you're going to do is spin your wheels and piss yourself off and burn yourself out. If you got the yeah. money, go spend five grand on a mentor for six weeks, six months, right. whatever it is, you know, go go buy a go buy a course, do something, get yourself the blueprint. Because like one of my current students, Angel. He came to me and he was like, man, he, and he's an insurance. He's a closer. He's an insurance. He's like, but I've been taking all of this free stuff and I've just been in a rat race for two years and haven't got a deal. Yep. And I can't do this. And I was super reluctant to even take him on. Uh, but he was actually referred to me uh, from somebody I know really well. And so I was like, you know what? I'll do this. And uh, we're on month four and he just got his first deal two weeks ago. Oh, nice. Yeah, not not I mean not a home run, but eleven grand. You know, still something. It's it proof of yeah. concept, right? Yeah, and I just said, see, and all he needed was somebody to help him connect the dots, and then just weed out all the other bullshit that he's heard. You know, I'm like, okay, well, this right. is good. This, you know, kind of ignore this and just kind of just get him on, get him on the right path, and we got him his first deal. So nice, nice, yeah. and and that's that range true, man. Even even if uh, you would just want to start your, on your own, you know, I put everything on a credit card. When I first started, yeah. I was yeah. already in debt. Um, I put my, I put five grand on a coaching program and then I had to put my marketing dollars. Cause that's another thing, right? You got to market. It costs money to market. <laughs> Even if you go yeah. drive for dollars, you got to cold call PPC or whatever it is. Gas, gas is $6 a gallon. Like <laughs> you got to skip trace. You got to do all that. Right. Um, you know, sometimes when we're looking at our bank account, we're like, where's, where are these charges come from? Cause you know, you got all the different platforms, and all this other yep. stuff. Right. Yes. Yeah, um, so that that'd be my advice. Go hit up Stuart, you know, get some coaching, you know, marketing, yeah. sales. He's gonna help you get the the not just your first deal, but consistent deal flow. And I think that's what we're all yeah. really want and needing if you want to be a you know somebody who's gonna work for yourself, right? Somebody yeah. who who if you want financial freedom or if you want to go buy rental properties, you know, he's gonna teach you how to do it consistently. And you want to get out of the rat race of the nine to five, you know, it's exactly you know, be your own boss and just, yeah, there, there's a lot of adjustments and it's only, it's going to get more difficult before it gets better. You know? Yep. If, if, if we ever, you know, it's probably be what, you know, minimum of five years till we ever see what we saw the last three years, you know, mm -hmm. maybe 10 years before we ever see something like that again, you know? Yeah. It's, it, that, that was, that would be called that fairy tale land. Yeah. It's, <laughs> It's, that was generational kind of stuff. So it'll, it'll be a while, you know, so it's time to get back to actual work and actually doing the right thing. Actual work. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Stuart. Hey, I, I, again, I couldn't, I couldn't thank you enough uh, for hopping on here, growing our relationship. Uh, let me ask you this, Stuart, where can our listeners find you online and how can they reach out to you? Uh, Instagram uh, at Stu Seals Deals. I was going to change that. So it's just, you know, S-T-U-S-E-A-L-S. -S -S -E D-E-A-L-S, Stu Seals Deals. 
Um, you can shoot me a DM on there. Um, I check them right you off know, pretty much every day. Love it. It will be in the show notes. Um, so just go um, shoot them a follow. Hit them up on tell, – tell them that you uh, heard him on this podcast and uh, go check out his coaching program. Uh, if it's a good fit, he would love to have you on. Yeah, I mean, like I said, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll talk to anybody. And if, you know, if anything, you know, you got, you know, some questions, I'm always down to, you know, I'm always open to giving a little bit of free knowledge, you know, what I can do, you know. And it's not one of those ones that break the bank, so. Awesome. Hey, well, hey, we'll see you again here on the Real yeah. Estate Block Podcast. Hey, Aaron, I appreciate it, man. You guys have a good, uh, good rest of your day and uh, Merry Christmas if I don't talk to you. All right. Merry Christmas, man.